strange names you know when we talk about strange names the names themselves are not strange but the properties are strange you must already have heard about the twin primes so the primes they can also be twins and twin primes are the numbers which differ by 2 like you have the numbers uh, say 11 and 13 so you can see they are consecutive odd numbers and they both of them are prime and they differ by 2 can you name some more uh, pairs of such prime numbers which differ by 2 we have 17 and 19 this is also a pair of twin primes and likewise if you uh, proceed further then 21 23 25 27 29 31 29 and 31 this is yet another pair and likewise if you carry on finding so many you will find so many different pairs of twin prime numbers so very common concept and i think most of the school students they study this co uh, the twin prime numbers likewise you have the term co prime numbers so the co prime numbers are the numbers whose highest common factor is 1 so they these numbers are often confused with prime numbers but they may not be prime like if i take an example of say 8 and 15 both of them are not prime because 8 is divisible by 2 and 15 is divisible by 3 5 and so on and so they are not prime but if we consider both of them the highest common factor between 8 and 15 is 1 because 8 is divisible by 2 only so 2 times 2 times 2 and 15 is divisible by 3 and 5 so there is no common factor between them so the highest common factor of 8 and 15 is 1 and therefore this pair of numbers is known as a co prime pair of numbers so you should avoid that confusion co prime numbers are not prime numbers they have no common factor that means the highest common factor is just one so that is one more uh, amazing thing about primes then next up we have a, a strange name here mersenne primes if you see this name i may be pronouncing it wrongly but you can check on google what are mersenne primes now again it has to obey some property right and mersenne primes also obey one such property so any prime number of the form 2 raised to power p minus 1 any prime number which is in this form 2 raised to power p minus 1 where this number p is also prime p is also prime is called a mersenne prime like let's take an example if i take p as 2 so 2 square minus 1 how much will that be 4 minus 1 3 and 3 is again a prime number so here also you should have a prime number and when you calculate this you should get a prime number as the answer likewise you can take so many different examples of mersenne primes if you put 3 3 is also a prime number right and 2 cube is 8 8 minus 1 is 7 and 7 is also a prime number so 3 7 all these are mersenne primes you can take uh, 5 also like 2 raised to power 5 32 1 so 31 is also mersenne prime you can try so many different uh, things see 2 3 5 they are consecutive primes and everything is Uh, getting me a mersenne prime but it doesn't mean that every number will give me a mersenne prime number so you can try experiment this and i'm sure you are going to be amazed you know by the results which you will get then we have something called sophie germain numbers so these are sophie germain primes so another different property another different uh, name given to the prime numbers so what is the property which is to be obeyed here now we need a prime p such that 2p plus 1 is also prime is also prime any prime number 
which can be written in the form 2p plus 1 and where p is also a prime number that is called a Sophie Gerlain prime. Now what's the example? Let's take the example of 23. How do we write 23 in this form? It is 2 times 11, 22 plus 1. See, this 11 is a prime number and when you put 11 in 2p plus 1, it is getting me another prime number, right? So this 11 is called a Sophie Germain prime. Likewise, you can try some more combinations. I think 53 also works here. If I take 53 here, I will get uh, this is 106 plus 107 and 107 is again a prime number. So you can go on and on and try some more combinations. I think 41 also works. Uh, if you see 41 is 2 times 41 plus 1 is 82 plus 1, 83 which is again prime number. So all these numbers which I am writing in the bracket now, they are Sophie Germain primes. Likewise, very uh, uh, you know related to this concept is the concept of the safe primes. Safe primes. Now, how do you, uh, you know, actually uh, define these safe primes is how you define Sophie Germain primes. So this is the prime number, right? And here we have the Sophie Germain prime. The other side, this will be a safe prime. So if you want to define it, it will be a prime number p where p this is p right so p minus 1 upon 2 will also be prime p such that p minus 1 upon 2 this is also a prime number then we will call p as a safe prime now there are a lot of things to understand a lot of things to enjoy you know when you start getting into a topic you realize there are so many different angles and so many different concepts which we still don't know. Most of the students, most of the uh, people who are preparing for competitive exams, they just know that prime numbers are the numbers which have only two factors, the one and the number itself. And they know a series of prime numbers, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13 and so on. At most, what they study is, they know that, okay, the prime numbers uh, follow some definite patterns and uh, um, uh, what are the various prime numbers less than 50 or some of them will uh, know numbers less than 100 also right that's it but it's a big topic actually and there are so many different concepts which we are still uh, you know unaware of so let's take another one now this is really really important this is a very very important property of prime numbers and i'll try to prove it in front of you in this video okay so the property states that whenever you have a prime number p suppose p is a prime number then p square the square of the prime number reduced by 1 this will also will always be divisible by is always divisible by 24 now i'm going to prove this why square of a prime number minus 1 is always divisible by 24 or it is a multiple of 24. So for understanding this, let's try and uh, factorize this p square minus 1. So we all know that p square minus 1 can be factorized as p square minus 1 square that is p plus 1 and p minus 1, right? So there are two factors. Remember p is a prime number here, okay? Now first thing I am going to do is to plot it on a, on a number line maybe. So this is p, this is 1 less than p, p minus 1 and this is 1 more than p, p plus 1. Now we know that except 2 which is the smallest prime number and it's the only even number which is prime, this p is not even, right? It is not even. So 4, 6, 8, 10, they cannot be even because they are all divisible by 2. Now when this number is not even, that means it is odd, 1 less than the odd number is going to be even and 1 more than the odd number is also going to be even. So P minus 1 and P plus 1 actually are consecutive even numbers. 
and whenever you have two consecutive even numbers if one of them is divisible only by 2 then the next one will be divisible by 4 right just think you have number 12 and 14 see this is divisible by 4 and this is divisible by 2 you take any other pair say 30 and 32 30 is divisible by 2 but not by 4 but this is divisible by 4 so consecutive even numbers if one of them is divisible by 2 then the other one will be divisible by 4 correct now out of p minus 1 If I assume that p minus one is divisible by two, it can be the other way around also. If this is, if this is divisible by four, then this will be divisible by two. Okay, so you can take both cases. It works both ways. So if p minus one is divisible by two, then this one p plus one will be divisible by four. Correct. And from these two, what will happen if I multiply these? P minus one into P plus one. It will be multi uh, multiplied. It will be a multiple of rather two times four, eight. So it is divisible by eight. Does that work? And does that make sense? Just take some examples, and you will understand why P minus one into P plus one is always divisible by eight. And therefore, this product is obtained from this, right? So P square minus one. Is actually divisible by eight, so eight times something, right? Now this is the first thing I wanted to obtain. Now let's do the same thing again. I'll plot it on the number line here: p, p minus one, p plus one, right? Apart from the number three, which is the smallest uh, uh, multiple of three, which is a prime number, right? This p is not divisible by 3 not divisible by 3 because it's a prime number right not divisible by 3 just think if a number is not divisible by 3 its predecessor or successor one of them will surely be divisible by 3 can you take an example let's try not divisible by 3 so let's take 10 Prior to this, we have nine, and after this, we have eleven. See, nine is divisible by three. If you take a number like say twenty, then nineteen and twenty-one. Now, see, nineteen is not divisible by three, but twenty-one is divisible by three. So, one of the one of the numbers, the predecessor or the successor, will always be divisible by three, right? So, either p minus one. Or p plus one will be divisible by three, and so even if one of them is divisible by three, their product p minus one times p plus one will be divisible by three. Correct, and so p square minus one is three times something. Right, it is divisible by three. Now look at that. Two results which I got here. I got p square minus one is eight times something, and p square minus one is three times and something. So obviously, if something is divisible by eight and three both, then p square minus one is actually divisible by eight times three, twenty-four. And therefore, p square minus one is always a multiple of twenty-four. so everything has a logic you can see uh, i have taken two cases in first case i proved that p square minus 1 is a multiple of 8 and in the second case i proved that p square minus 1 is a multiple of 3 and so it is a multiple of 24 so any prime number if you square that up and subtract 1 from it it will always lie in the table of 24